Joining us with this week's Ag Week Market Extra is Kent Beadle. And Kent, soybean market has really um, tried to recover off of the lows that we had with the Chinese tariff news and whatnot. But we're also trying to figure out what the yield is out there, aren't we? Yeah, and with soybeans, soybean yields are just extraordinarily hard to forecast. We've never found great correlations between USDA crop condition ratings and what those ultimate yields uh, eventually end up being. So. Right now, we're hearing a lot of 48 and a half to 50 bushel yields, which is trend line to maybe a bushel and a half above trend line. We have no reason to believe that that's not in the ballpark, and that's what we would probably go with right now. Soybeans obviously are undervalued. So, what is your marketing strategy going into harvest? Is this a year to store? We all have been selling off the combine every other year. Yeah, well, we are used to selling beans off the combine, but bean basis this fall, unless we get a deal, is going to be very, very poor, especially in the upper Midwest. And as a result, we're telling upper Midwest producers to make some room for their soybeans and possibly sell some corn instead. Use that space usually dedicated for corn and or for wheat and store the soybeans instead because you're going to get a better return on that space with improving basis over time. Soybean prices, though, really recovering the two plus dollars that we lost, or even a big portion of that, is going to be predicated on getting a deal with China. And how long do you think it'll take us to get that? Well, I wish I knew how long it would take to get a deal with the Chinese. I think, you know, um, I do believe this. No matter how long it takes, we will sell beans to China. We will see the Chinese or the Brazilians run out of soybeans eventually, and the price spread ultimately cover the gap of that 25% tariff. If we get a deal sooner, we are going to start that process a lot quicker. It'll be a lot better for the American producer and those prices will rally a lot further. Uh, corn market, do you suggest doing sales strategies and then looking for re-ownership opportunities or what? So if we're going to sell some corn instead of selling soybeans off the combine, I would like to maintain ownership of the futures. That can be done with a futures account, it can be done with a basis contract through your local elevator, or we could do it with call option or call option spreads. There's a lot of ways that you can maintain that ownership. But do you believe the upside is there because we do have this good underlying demand base in the market, right? An extraordinarily good demand base and tight supplies around the world. This is the tightest world stocks to use since 1973-74. We think that's going to provide some volatility this winter and again this spring. It should give some uh, producers some marketing opportunities. And have we traded the biggest yield you think the market can handle? Because at one time we were thinking 180, but have kind of backed off of that. I think that, uh, you know, we're going to get a lot from this first USDA report and they, they're going to give us numbers and, and uh, ear counts and those sorts of things. But my gut tells me that the yield is not 180, uh, and that it might be something not more than 174 to 176. What about the wheat market? Wheat's been helping to pull along corn. Wheat's had a lot of global issues. How long can the market be pushed higher with that in mind, especially when we're outpricing ourselves in the world market? Well, the reason that we've been outpricing ourselves in the world market is that there was a large speculator who was very short wheat. And so as the realization of these short crops in Europe and in Russia and Ukraine and Australia hit the marketplace, that short covering essentially is keeping U.S. futures, uh, keeping pace with the gains in European markets. What really needs to happen for us to hit the export grid is for either U.S. futures to slow down or to even fall back a little bit so that we're under we're priced underneath the European values. Was it a gift to have this kind of price levels as we moved into harvest on I, I think so. I think it was an, it was a very nice uh, early Christmas present for US wheat farmers and I think they should think about taking advantage of it with it, of it with some wheat sales. So how much should they sell here? Well, it depends on how much you've sold to date, but um, you know, a good uh, 10 or 20% sale uh, on this rally certainly wouldn't be Uh, out of the question at all. And the cattle market continues to be very volatile, very frustrating. Uh, The funds are very long, so the futures, we get these nice pops, but we can't break out of this trading range. What changes that? Does anything change it? Well, if the funds are buying it and they can't make the market go higher, that's that's a pretty good signal that the market has gotten high enough. And we may in fact get ourselves a a reasonable correction to the downside 
because there is still a lot of cattle supply out there and the market's been waiting for that cattle to come to town. It hasn't been coming as quickly. Uh, we still think it's coming. And when the funds who are long decide to exit those positions, that could give us a pretty sizable pullback. Although cash has been stronger longer than we thought, boxes have been stronger. Absolutely. And exports are well above last year. Yeah, so a little bit from the bullish side, a little bit from the bearish side. Try I to guess give everybody I, a little something. I right? guess that's why we are <laughs> staying in the range we're staying in. Okay. What about the hog market? We have been so beat up there with supply situation, especially looking at fourth quarter and all of the trade issues. And so what is your advice for producers under that scenario? Well, at this point in time, given the size of the drop and the large potential that we have, if we do get the NAFTA deal signed and as the fact that the funds are getting short the hogs here right now, honestly, if we just could ink an agreement and get some good news in front of this market, I think we could have a reasonable pop, maybe five, six dollars. And then you start taking a look at hedging again. Pleasure to visit with you as always. Good to see you. Kent Thank Beadle you, joining us. That is this week's Ag Week Market Extra.